off investments on the fancy version. I know. Dark Ascension, everybody. We're doing a double box of Dark Ascension. Wow. This video is brought to you by my patron, Eric. Dr. Eric. Uh, apparently, uh, he just flies around in private jets all day and lives in the skies. Also known as sky clouds. Uh, Eric, thanks for being a very kind patron. And uh, we get to open something different today. And uh, enjoy it, everybody. Sit back, relax. going to be a long, fun video today. We're doing a double tap of Dark Ascension. Holy smokes. Is it up? Oh, oh, crap. This is my old WPN, the uh, the Whipdilic. This is my Whipdilic. Hashtag Whipdilic store. Yeah, I used to sell SD21 460 ones on Saturdays, too. What year was this? 2012. Holy smokes. Eight years old, ladies and gentlemen. So here we are having a throwback to 2012. Right after the financial collapse of 2008-9 disaster, we stabilized and we went into this era. Um, I want to give you guys a couple of important uh, fun facts, in my opinion, from what I remember. I absolutely loved the artwork in this set. I thought it was absolutely spicy, just horror, just evil horror, you know, monsters and just raw. It was just such a cool thing. I love the feel of it. Um, obviously, I can let everybody know. Ooh, first mythic, the vampire hot chick who just glides through your window. Um, not a lot of financial value. We got a, a tip card. We got a flippity card. We got a Grandma Rudy over here. And we got a foil heckling little Rudy's in your basement for our foil uncommon. So we got a little grandma here with a where this is uh flip cards are really big, they all turn into werewolves and craziness. Uh financial value was pretty weak for Dark Ascension. It was a weak received set in 2012. Uh, because remember, this is the era with like Avicen Restored, Innistrad, OG Innistrad. So you didn't really have, you know, competing um with those type of sets. It, this product just didn't do well. Evolving Wilds with, by the way, I just want to let everybody know, with my favorite artwork on Evolving Wilds out of all of them, Grip Tide, a lot of horror, you know, kind of that that ghostly Halloween type feel. Absolutely, really, really cool feel for this. Ah, uh, the Messenger. One of the best rares in the set. Uh, the Zombie Messenger Man was a pretty big deal back in the day. Uh, we got a human token here, a flippity card, and Grandma Rudy just wants to really be a part of the video today. So, definitely a lot of cool, fun things to talk about um, as we crack 72 packs for a double box opening. Man, so uh, very, very cool stuff. We're just looking at some of the commons let you guys enjoy that artwork. Look at that. Nothing says Halloween era, man, like this stuff. Just super cool. Fiends. we got some Alpha Wolves. Gavany Island Rot. And Curse of Misfortunes for a really cool looking rare there from the Enchantment. And look at that Vampire Token. Nice and spicy looking. And flip card and a loyal Cathar. But it turns into not a very loyal zombie. So, but yeah, so that's the first thing we want to talk about today is that to remind everybody when this set came out in 2012, it did not do well. Stores that did mass box openings did not hold up real well. They did not really turn much of a profit, but man, it was a fun way to lose money because man, the cards were really cool. Card stock, card quality was spot on in this air. What is this chick doing? I don't know if I'm. I'm impressed, or if I'm nervous, I'm scared, I don't know what to think. And uh, Torture, we got the old Mr. Wolf there, looking good. Altar of the Lost, and Bone Flinger, I love the art, terrible card. And the Cage, one of the most iconic cards for the first printing of the Cage from Dark Ascension. Very, very cool. And of course, uh, we got Afflicted Deserter, which turned into, of course, their Werewolf. So let's see, we'll, so we'll start with that. So yeah, a lot of stores that did mass box openings. Um, it was very difficult to turn any form of profit on this product because they're just were the financial value, the expected value from day one was very weak. Not not as bad as like a Theros or some sort of really bad dumpster fire. But oh my god, look at that artful dodge! I haven't seen that card in years. Fling, even the god the artwork was just so Halloween gritty, man. So nice. Um, but overall, the issue was just the financial was the aspect was just really, really weak there. Look at that Emmer Wolf from Mrs. Therese. They're absolutely stunning. Look at that. And Village Survivors, very cool looking. And our first mythic, the Nasty Reaver Spirit. Very expensive to cast, but absolute monster of a spirit mythic. Financial value, obviously not very good there. And we have ourselves the Chalice of Life. And oh, our first basic land. 
Yeah, you didn't really get a lot of basic lands in this product. Chalice of Life. Anybody remember this card? If you have at least 10 or more life, uh, you can transform it. Also, it's kind of Chalice of Death. And then, boom, play it. Target player just loses five life. Holy smokes. I do remember this card. I remember thinking this was the coolest card, but never did anything or really became worth anything. But it was a really cool card. Like I said, the flavor and theme of this set from this era was just spot on, man. I mean, they didn't hold back. Look at that. Like, they would never, ever do artwork like that in 2020. Like, the woman actually has boobs, which is illegal. Um, the kind of that drama feel. Like, look at the raw nature of that card. Even, like, look how she's grabbing him. And he's like, he's like, I don't know if he's a zombie. He's dying or something. But, dude, look at, like, they would never do that now. Thought Scour, very nice common. I didn't realize that. Wild Hunger. Fires, Creepy Chick. And uh, Torturer. And Elk. And we got the Kid Cat. And we got a Deadly Allure. Look at this chick. Holy smokes. That's what I said, like, the artwork. Steve Argo, man. Flipping amazing, man. It does, actually, you know what? It does kind of have that Liliana the Veil kind of theme, doesn't it? Like, look at what she's wearing. Kind of that, was it, like a spandex rubber outfit with the long, dark hair? She definitely has characteristics of Lily. You can definitely tell that. Mystic Retrieval and an Increasing Savagery? I don't even remember that rare. Okay. And Crazy Dude, don't do steroids. That's what happens. And, of course, a Loyal Cathar again. But, yeah, so it's this set, the, the, everybody's favorite part of this set was the raw kind of that. That just, oh, that raw movie feel, man. Just so nice. But that was really where it stopped there. Love the graveyard type artwork from um, Innistrad. Gorgeous dryad. Look at her. Beautiful. I love the red. Look at the red flower accent. That looks really nice. And we got a nice little haddock. Fling the ghoul. And we got our shield for our first uncommon. Mr. Worm. And wait, the worm, does he turn into something? No, he doesn't. Blood feud. And another messenger. Look at that. Boy, this would have been a spicy box at release. And a nice hermit that turns into Mr. Werewolf. Pretty cool. Um, so I think that's a good spark to kind of uh, kind of discuss, kind of let you guys know what happened back then. Um, other few important facts everybody needs to know about is, uh, yes, that's what I'm going to look like when I'm older. But more importantly, this was before the uh, RTR print, print shifting behavior of Wizards of the Coast. So this was not a kind of reprint print to demand or oblivion or whatever dramatic word you want to use. This is before Wizards changed the print style. Holy cow, look at that. Deranged Outcast. Look at that art. That is stunning, man. We got zombie looking there and afflicted deserter for the uncommon into the werewolf. And up, up, foil rare for the Requiem Angel. Holy smokes. Stunning. Look at her. Look at those wings, man. Absolutely stunning angel. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Who did that? Eric? Absolutely phenomenal job on that artwork. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this is before Wizards changed into the, um, you know, along the lines of when the product was in standard, they would initiate print runs to keep it available to prevent price spikes when it was a new product. Um, Curse of Thirst. Ooh, that's a wild artwork. We got the old heretic there. Chill of Foreboding, was it? And Flayer of the Hatebound for a Devil Undying. That was a, I remember that mechanic. And uh, we got the Hermit and our Forest. Yeah, you'll notice uh, not many lands. And then also when you do get the lands, you notice most of them. I think almost, were they all or most of them? I was like, they're all uh, Innistrad lands. I didn't know if anybody noticed that. I don't think they did land for each of the different ones. I could be wrong, though. And, of course, Gruesome Discovery. Thought Scour. So we can start skipping through. So we've pretty much seen, I think, the commons at this point. All right, Warden. Warden of the Wall, Faith Shield, and the Urn. Look at that urn. It's like some genie spirit chick. And a ghoul tree. Oh, look at that. Eight drop for a 10-10 zombie tree. Costs one less to cast for each creature in your graveyard. Wow, that's a wild one. And Ravenous Demon for our second foil rare. This is our flip foil rare. Yeah, um, Ravenous Demon turns into a ridiculous greed. Arch Demon of Greed. Well, that's a crazy one. So, but yeah, that's uh, that gives everybody an idea of the theme of uh, Dark Ascension. Uh, I was a big fan of this product. I was kind of standing alone in that opinion because uh, Deadly Allure. I think what it was, I just, I mean, I fell for the art of this set. Like, it's so underappreciated. Oh, that's a Therese artwork? I didn't even know that. That is just stunningly beautiful. Zombie apocalypse, everybody. And with an afflicted deserter. I just, I love this era. Ah, like, 
The, the Avacyn Restored, the Dark Ascension Innistrad era was just so just spicy on the flavor and just the style. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that myth. Look at that foil flip card on the back. Yeah, it was just so nice. Like, I just, ugh. Whoa, Burden of Guilt. Look at that. Very, a lot more realism, a lot more. Boy, look at that. Versus the computer-generated type feel. Undying Evil, Giant Dragon. Love that. I love the red accent with that. It really does it for me. Wolf Hunter's Quiver, the Tower Geist. Altar of the Lost. And we got ourselves a gorgeous-looking Vampire Blade Master. Very, very cool-looking card there. And we got ourselves a Human, the Loyal, and, of course, our Foil is a Scorned Villager. Look at her. Human Werewolf, and she gets pretty unhappy. There you go. So, but yeah, that was kind of the biggest takeaway that I remember, everybody, was really just the, how do I say it, the the lack of financial value, how the wholesale stores distributors weren't really a big fan of this product, but the actual players loved it. It was just such a cool feel, like, just, man, the lore was just spotted. Look at that curse of bloodletting. Like, look at that. Wow. Okay. And, oh my god. I, like, I haven't seen some of these cards in so long. It's Chosen. I'm like, absolutely gorgeous young lady there. Look at the, look at the, was his robes or curtains in the background? Absolutely stunning art from Steve Argyle. Absolutely gorgeous. Turns into, holy, okay. Didn't see that coming. Uh, Steve Argyle, definitely you can tell he is the same artist that did Liliana. That's almost Liliana's outfit, if you guys notice that. Yeah, it was a different world, everybody. Eight years ago was a very different world, to kind of say it very gently, everybody. It was a very different world. The Collar, the Spirits, the Bone Flinger, and a Curse of Echoes. This was actually a decent rare. And Humans and Hermit. So next thing I want to talk about is the financial value of uh, Dark Ascension right now. For an 8-year-old product, the price of this set, this is one of the cheaper, non, I don't know, really good rates of return if you were an investor of this product, which I was. Um, Ghoul Tree again. Oh, nothing spicy in that pack. And the same Villager. This was one of the products that did not skyrocket. Um, again, if you look at Avacyn Restored boxes, over 300. If you look at original Innistrad pushing 500. Obviously, Dark Ascension still being, what, below $200 a box is really... Wow, look at that vampire. Dude, look at that guy. Holy smokes. And, hey, we got a worm. Haven't seen you yet. And a flare. And look at this, the Doomsayer. Look at these guys. The world is ending. Everybody's going to be a zombie. That's cool. But, yeah, that was... Uh, Kind of one way to look at it. This was kind of the the bad stepchild of the uh, the block in 2011, 2012. And I still kind of am surprised that the price is still this low for this product. Look at that blood feud. Wow, that's spicy. Mystic Retrieval and another zombie apocalypse. We're getting some duplication. How many cards are in this set? Uh, 158. 158. Whoa, that's a small set. Okay. I thought it was like 220. All right, so we're definitely going to get a lot of duplication. I didn't realize the set was only 158 cards. Heretic, we got the Geist, and Alpha Brawl for a very cool-looking uh, rare there. And what do we got in the back? And another gorgeous Chosen of the Makov. God, that is Steve, man. Yeah, that is... Holy crap. What a... Just, I, that's the one thing I was always been envious and jealous of. I wish I had the ability to do art like some of these artists. I just... The skill set needed is something else, man. Lost in the Woods. Look at that. That is really cool. Look at these guys, like, freaking out in the woods. I like that. That's cool. And we got our Soul Seizure. There's a different one. And a Crushing Vines. Look at that owl. For Foil Common and a Soul Seizure. Well, look at that. That chick is just being all nice and innocent. Well, bam Soul Seizure. Oh, my God. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I know. Just really... Really something else, really something else, everybody. But yeah, it's, that's kind of, I just like to share this stuff with you all. Warlord, the breath, shattered perception. Dude, Therese, that's such a good piece of art, man. Wow. Ah, the Dungeon Geist. I, wasn't that even reprinted? Very, very infamous card from the old uh, Dark Ascension era there. So we're approaching the, uh, the end of box one here. Definitely a longer box opening video. I guess I probably could have even done two videos and split it apart, but... I, I like to take my time at the beginning. Of course, Wake Dancer, always one of my favorite uncommon common artworks. She just looks gorgeous. Absolutely love that piece of art. Immer Wolf, of course, same thing. Therese, gorgeous art. Oh, say, oh God. Now I got to talk about Seance. 
All right, well, for those of you who weren't around, uh, I was told from other people, apparently Seance has a very big story behind it. I was told, and I don't know if this has any truth to it, you all in the comments section, who, if you're still watching, uh, you are going to have to tell me if the story of this Seance is true. Uh, but apparently, back in the day, there were people in these finance um, groups or message boards or something. Hey, hang on a second. Vault of the Archangel. You know what I always loved about this card? The Archangel Shadow on the floor. I always thought that was cool. I never noticed that when I was younger. I always thought that was a pretty spicy thing. Anyway, so Seance became notorious when apparently I was told, and again, this could be all made up bunch of crap, but I was told from multiple people that apparently magic investors or supposed investors from years ago uh, attempted to buy out Seance and like destroy the print run or burn the cards or hoard them or something to try to push the price up and they were trying to get other people involved or I, I heard all kinds of weird crap on that card. I've never seen any proof or I don't know what the deal was, but apparently Seance had some bizarre, some bizarre cultish following of trying to manipulate it or something. I don't know. Curse of Thirst, that is a stunningly beautiful piece of art. Another Shattered Perception. Hey, Soren, Lord of Innistrad. Dude, this was a heavy hitting dude back in the day, man. Holy smokes. And Planeswalker was kind of a big deal back then, everybody. We got ourselves the Lord of Innistrad. Dude, that was... Dude, I, that used to be a really... That was like the top... I think one of the... The top or the second from the top mythic when this set came out, man. It was nutsos. Quiver. Altar. Geist. And a Curse of Misfortunes. Really cool artwork. That artwork, for some reason, reminds me of like Ice Age. I don't know why. And that is it. Anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to share that whole seance thing. Apparently, that was like this big attempt at manipulating that one particular card. Why that card or how it was picked, I have no idea, everybody. Sorry, I just honestly have no clue. Uh, Grim Backwoods. Um, this is a funny little story. I remember this card, and I had a patron a long time ago trying to buy this card out. I don't know why. He bought like hundreds of copies. I mean, I thought it was cool. The fact it doesn't come into play tapped is always kind of one of the things I look for in lands, but... I don't know, four, and then you had to sack a creature just to get a card. I thought it was kind of kind of on the pricey side, that's all. And a foil common grip tide. So, as you can see, the foil pull rate seems to be pretty average. We're not really higher or lower than normal. I think average foil pull rate in these boxes is like 10 foils in a box. And we're at like, what, six, seven? So that's, that's kind of about right, actually. All right, Curse of Thirst, Curse of Exhaustion. Iron, that is cool, man. Look at her. Hardcore chick, man, like it. And Lost in the Woods. And we got another Hermit. Alright, so we're picking up speed now that we're getting the feel of this product. Why this product is still this cheap? I think it's price memory. I really do, everybody. Grim Flowering. Another Emerwolf. And, oh, Hell Vault. Oh, man. This, there was so much speculation on this guy. This was such a weird mythic, man. So we did get the Hell Vault. Oh, look at this. And in the double mythic pack. Look at that, everybody. We hit the double mythic with the binding blade that turns into a flipping demon of ridiculous. This was an epic card. I don't know what it's worth today, but that was one of the coolest flip cards I remember ever seeing when I was younger. Dude, that was awesome, man. Absolutely. That's got to be one of the best. That's got to be the best pack of the box. A double mythic pack like that and a Hell Rider. Very, very cool. And of course, the gorgeous Chosen of Markov and an Innistrad Lamb. Oh, man, I can't believe they got a Hellvolt and a Binding Blade in a single pack. See, that that's, you know, stuff like that happens. You just get one pack, and then bam, you just hit, like, double Mythics, man. It's rare. Oh, look at this, everybody. We got ourselves Mr. Gravecrawler. Oh, man. One drop, two, one, infamous. There doesn't even need an introduction. Everybody remembers that flipping card. That was a symbolic card, if I've ever seen one. All right. So let's see here. As we get ready to wrap up box one, everybody, we are at a counter lash. Um, yeah, it's a counter uh, you cast it, but yeah. I remember some attempts at that card, but I thought the drawback and the alternate casting cost was just, it's just too much. It never really got off the ground. Just kind of is what it is. And we are looking at a call to the kindred. Um, never really did much. I remember that card. Oh, and we did get a hunt master right in the back. Look at that. So we actually got both of the Mythic best flip cards. We're at a five Mythic opening. Wow. Okay. Four packs left. Absolutely fantastic. 
box opening for Dark Ascension coming through here. Okay, that's impressive. Oh my god. What an ending to box one. Are you kidding me right now? Oh my god! <laughs> you gotta be kidding me! Oh, seriously? Oh, wow. That is incredible. We just hit like three, four mythics and another foil. Remember, foil rares were not easy to get back then. With the cage. Wow. Amazing. But, dude, there's, like, at this point, like, I'm like, dude, we shouldn't even open the second box. We just, just call it quits here, man. Like, jar of eyeballs. And now we get to finish on the meme card. Absolutely ending on the jar of eyeballs. Wow. Oh my goodness. I feel like we should just, I don't even know, man. Maybe we should do the second box opening on another video. Because this is just, what, Anathalia! Oh. Dude, you could not handpick. Oh, and a really cool looking axe. You couldn't handpick a better Dark Ascension booster box. Dude, Eric, dude, Eric, oh, dude. I'm going to hit you with dude darts. Dude, 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 man. This is absolutely home run. Dark Ascension box one, ending on a gorgeous, increasing devotion from Daniel, the artist there, and of course, ending on a gorgeous Steve Argyle, chosen a Markov, flipping over to the evil chick that you can't say no to. Wow, that box one. Holy smokes. I guess we'll do box two. I mean, I already said I told everybody we would. I don't want to really like end the video, so we're going to keep going. I'll go through this one a lot quicker, but dude, I don't, there's no way we're going to top that box one, man. That box one was just insanity. Holy smokes. Absolutely incredible box one. Oh, okay. No breaks, nothing. Right in the box two. Not going to screw around. We're just going to get... Boy, those packs are tough to open. We're going to go right into box two, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Right the third messenger. Holy crap. We got two and a whole... <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. Pack one, a messenger, and a flippin' hunt master? Wow. Okay, I guess I'm glad we're gonna keep rolling. We're gonna keep rolling, everybody. We're gonna churn and burn now, because this is, we gotta keep this momentum going. Another meme of eyeballs, okay. Another jar. And we got Curse of Exhaustion, foil uncommon. Wow. Dude. See, these are the moments that cracking old boxes or packs like that, this is just. To me, the value and excitement of enjoying this with everybody is just priceless. Another zombie apocalypse. That is our third zombie apocalypse. You know, and that's what I said. I'm like, you know, people are spending, you know, three, three hundred and fifty dollars or something for a box of the new master stuff and everything. And I'm like, they have some of these old boxes that are still pretty cheap. Sudden disappearance. And I don't know if it's just because people don't like it or they don't know about it. I don't know. I've always I always found that kind of weird, but. Hey, whatever, you know, it is what it is, but, oh man, what a, I'm still on the high of that first box, everybody, deranged outcast again, I always love that artwork, the way she looks like that is that she looks gorgeous, and loyal, Kathaha. I was just, as you guys can tell, and the beautiful 3% ladies watching, uh, I just was a real big fan of the more realistic, I don't know, realism style artwork, and just the way they drew it, like the angels, the women, the guys, even the nature, just looking at the way they drew everything, which is really, had more of a gritty, different feel to it. And I just thought it gave it a cool, I mean, look at that. Even little Grandma Rudy here just looks spicy, man. Like the detail in the background, it was just a really cool, look at that. Look at that scab, man. Holy smokes, that's creepy. I just like the whole vibe of it. It, just, it really, that lore really comes through in the set that they really cared about the storyline and the feel with Innistrad and Avacyn. And, I mean, and of course, Steve Argyle is just out of control, man. Flipping out of control. Mind Crusher, Crazy Hulk guy. And another Chosen. And a Foil Rare Doomsayer. The end is near. Ah. Alright, alright. Well, that's not the greatest way to start off with our Foil Rare on Box 2. But you know what? I mean, we hit two Foil Rares on Box 1. Dude, that... I don't think I've ever seen a better Dark Ascension box on Box 1. Another Dungeon Goss. And another... God, you get so many... Okay, Steve, are you trying to prove a point? Like, why is this gorgeous chick, like, in every single pack? Like, we've gotten, like, ten of those at this point. Man, so cool. See, that's why I told everybody. You know, people laughed at me years ago when I said the price of these old things are going to become 
Very pricey. Look at this chick. What is this lingering souls? What's she like? Look, this guy's got a knife in his back. Her clothes are falling off. Her hair is stuck to spider webs. Like, that's my point. Like, you look at this artwork and you're like, what the heck is going Look at this. Look at this chick. Is she, like, choking? Is she got spiders in her mouth? Like, what the heck is going on? And that's what I look like on the weekends. It's just out of control. And a Thalia making me impressed. Everybody loves Thalia. How can you not like Thalia? And a Swampy. Remember, everybody, Swampy's tap for 1.5 mana. Not one. Always remember that. Don't believe me? Google it. And now I want to see how many people actually do Google that. All right. Grim Shattered Perception and Mystic Retrieval and another Counter Lash. Look at that wolf. Oh, stunning. Stunning wolf and a Tower Geist for the foil. Uncommon, everybody. Absolutely love it. Absolutely. I love the monsters and the zombies and the women in this. The arts, the angels, the equipments, the evil dudes. It's just all everything about it, man. Just so sweet. Even the nature stuff. Look at that. And the eyes on that wolf, man. That's spicy. And another cage. I can't believe we hit a foil rare cage, man. And another grandma bag. I cannot believe we pulled that off. I am so blown away that we hit all those mythics. And we even hit the unhollowed in the clothes with a foil cage. Like, the ending of that box was just absolutely insanity. And we got the dragon for the mythic. Um, Not a big deal. This was not... A, I don't remember this ever being a big deal. There was an attempt maybe, but just it never really had any legs or traction. The dragon just that... The dragon in Dark Ascension just never became, you know, the captain. It just it just didn't happen, everybody. And Quiver, guys, and Curse of Misfortunes again with a crazy human and a hermit. Alrighty. So here we go. We are down to the last uh, two-thirds of the box, about to approach the halfway it's already been an amazing video. I mean, at this point, anything at this point is just a bonus, man. Like, and, whoa, oh, what do we got? What do we got? We got ourselves the Chalice and a Foil Shadows. Look at that Shadow card. That's creepy. I love this Chalice card. It, that, I just want to build a deck around it just because it's fun. Like, that's what I like, dude. I used to love that stuff. That's the best part about Magic to me. Was not actually going to F&Ms or tournaments and this and that. Was literally just telling your friends, we meet up this Friday at your house or your sister's hot basement or something, and we play some strip magic. Dude, I am going to build the most ridiculous, bizarre deck that's going to drive you crazy. And she just said, okay, well, I want to play. And I said, no problem. You're always welcome. And that's just, you know, that's what makes magic fun. Building crazy, brood, jank, crazy stuff that people just have no idea what's coming. It's so much fun. Don't do steroids, folks. That's what happens to you. Soul seizure and a... <laughs> oh, yeah. That's just the magic gods and Peggy throwing me a bone. Look at that. Chalice of life. Chal I love it. I absolutely love it. That is, I just love it. Gotta be one of my favorite cards in the set. Just for the, just for the feels. The feel goods and the themes. Just the feel goods, everybody. Absolutely a lot of fun. And another Hellvolt. Alright. That's cool. And another Chal- Okay. Alright. Alright, Peggy. Alright, Peggy. You're, you're proving your point. You're proving your point. You're dumping a bunch of chalices on me. You know, we don't need to prove a point here. Ah, oh, man. That's so cool. So cool, everybody. Oh, the aristocrat. I kept thinking this was Avacyn Restored or Innistra. I didn't realize she was Dark Ascension. Absolutely epic vampire chick, man. Very iconic for this era. And deserter. Very cool. So we are getting a lot of mythics. We've really hit quite a... This has been a very impressive two-box opening, everybody. Absolutely impressive. Oh! Look at this, the increasing ambition. We missed you. We have not seen that. Again, same thing. Not a great card. Don't really care much. But dude, look at this dude. Look at the artwork with this dude in that helmet in the background. That is amazing. Absolutely. What is this? I don't remember you. Ravenous Demon. Oh, wait, yeah, we've seen this one. It turns into the crazy dude. Okay. Hey, is, uh... What was the... Wasn't there one more? Was, I'm trying to remember if this was... Was Ghoul... Wait. No, that might have been Avacyn. Maybe I'm, I'm getting it mixed up. And Alpha Brawl. We've already pulled you before. And a Hermit. I already got you. I'm trying to remember what that other one was. Was it Grizzle Brand? Was Grizzle? Is, is Grizzly Monster in this? Or is he... No, I'm getting the set confused. Lost in the Wood. And a Shun... What are you? Who are you? Mondronin? Shannon? What is this chick doing? Wow. That is cool. Very cool, Mike. Good job on the artwork, man. Gorgeous. Well, it's the home stretch, everybody. We are down to the last 15 packs. I don't think we can all enjoy or act 
for a better Dark Ascension experience in 2020. You know, it kind of fits 2020, right? Ghoul Tree for like fourth time. I love that vampire. Stunning. And of course, favorite. And Inquisitor for the foil common. I don't think we can really even ask for a, a, I mean, a better experience on doing a, a Dark Ascension box. I think I did one of these box openings like two, three years ago. And that was it. Another zombie apocalypse? Holy crap, that's like five zombie apocalypses. You know, and like I said, we'll do another Dark Ascension opening in the future. Probably going to be like 2021, maybe 2022. Uh, we do them every once in a while. Not very often, obviously. And Curse of Echoes there. Very cool. And another Hermit. Um, I always thought cards that just said like this, like Enchant Player, I always thought were kind of... Like, I remember back in the day with, like, Legends, the Enchant World, I always thought was kind of a neat thing. I always found that to be uh, quite fascinating, if you ask me. Increasing Ambition again. Yeah, you definitely, uh, Will Griffin, you definitely can get yourself quite a bit of duplicates. I had no idea the set was this small. Seriously, everybody. I had no idea. I kept thinking the set was, like, 230, 240, oh, 240 cards. Increasing Vengeance. I don't remember that card. And the demon again. Oh! And I saw, oh, there's our second foil rare. Sudden disappearance. Well, I guess every foil rare can't be, a, you know, some, the cage or some sort of mythic or something crazy, you know. But hey, you know what? We still we still hit some good ones. We really can't complain, everybody. Got the hate bound there and the elder in a beautiful looking island. Alright, so we are cruising into the close. It looks like we kind of stalled out. But again, the end of that last video... Uh, Got, went a little crazy, so we got to see what happens here. Another Curse of Echoes back to back. So you, you never really know till you get there. Honestly, you never really know. All it takes is two, three good packs in a row, and the entire value and experience of a booster box can shift quickly. Vault of the Archangel again. I don't, well, I don't think there was an Amazing Land Cycle. Was there Amazing Land Cycle in this? I don't think there was. I know Innistrad has some spicy lands, but I don't know if there's really. I'm trying to think. Like Dark Ascension. I don't think there was really any heavy hitting expensive lands. Could be wrong. And increasing devotion. All right, so yeah, now we're not really getting anything new or different. We seem to definitely be on the repeat cycle here. What do we got left? Oh, we only got four packs. All right. All right, well, let's get into the close here, everybody. Hope everybody really enjoyed the video because I sure did. What a what a fun experience. Grim Backwoods. Yeah, I guess that's kind of part of the land cycle there, but that's that's kind of really all you got. But I hope everybody really learned something. Got to have a nice throwback. Almost a decade old now. God, time flies. Hey, Runebinder, don't remember this creepy dude. Even that, even that, look at this old guy. Look how amazing that looks. How spicy is that, man? That looks so nice. All right, but anyways, again, I just want to thank the patron, Eric. Eric, why? I just got to thank you again for allowing all of us to uh, enjoy and experience this. We haven't seen the Fiend of Shadows here since the very beginning of the video. The flying uh, hot crazy chick, it happens. But definitely just what a what a fun time. Let everybody unwind, relax, and kind of decompress from the craziness in the world known as 2020. <laughs> and ending it on another, <laughs> got to end on another chalice. And of course, another seance. That seance story, I, that, I don't know if that's true. That, that's got to be the most ridiculous thing I've ever, it's so ridiculous, I almost feel like it's true because it just seems ridiculous. But increasing confusion, there's a different one and nothing Hiding in the back. All right, everybody. That about wraps it up for today. Very long video. Definitely a very fun experience for everybody. Hope everybody learned something and enjoyed it here. Oops. And ending on a feed the pack. And a soul Caesar and a foil ripper. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. That's creepy, man. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. As always, I appreciate the views, the honor, and privilege to entertain everybody. Have a fantastic day.